How will you fix our country if you get elected as president? Let me tell our countrymen that I cannot do it alone. We have to do this together. This is a country and we must have unity. We have enough laws, but we do not implement or follow the law. Right now, following the law is an only an option for Filipinos. It should be a must. To have peace and order, we must have an adequate police and military force, and we should overhaul the entire system and even the hierarchy of the two fighting forces of our government. We should have increased the salaries and take care of their families so they do not have to take bribes and they have to work with pride. Ang pinaka-importante po ay yung dignidad ng tao. At naman sa sweldo lang, number sana mabubuhay sila ng marapat-dapat. The only way to do that is really na increase the salaries kasi talaga ngayon mababa at hirap sila. The most important part in the security of our nation is to have an efficient and effective military and police. And therefore, we have to take care also of their welfare. But while waiting to perfect a system, we can call upon our citizens to enforce the law and make arrests, for after all, it is already allowed under the present laws of the land. Lahat naman tayong Filipino, we want to fix our country. Sa Dabao, I have inspired them to make the city great at nagawa na nyo. Nagawa ko, kaya natin, kaya ninyo, and we can inspire the whole of the Philippines. It's a matter of love of country again. As president, I will enforce the law. And I have to instill discipline. And that is the only way that we can go forward in this country. Strong leadership and a people would want to obey the law. To sustain peace, we must have progress. How do you intend to improve the economy to create jobs? In any country that has progress, there has to be industrialization. To create jobs, we must create factories. We have to build industries. We have to realize our long dream of having our own steel industry. For example, we export ores and the raw materials for steel, and we buy them back as a finished product, compounding the expense. Steel is needed everywhere. It is, as a matter of fact, the mother of industries. Everything you see around comes from the earth called steel. We generate jobs. Eh, pati ako, nag-i-import pa ako ng steel para sa bahay ko. Our steel mill can do it for us. We build our weapons, our cars, and someday we can build all of our needs in this country if we have the steel mills. Nagawa ng Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, and other nations sa kanilang steel industry. Nauna pa tayo sa lahat noong 1960s. But tignan mo ngayon, nag import tayo. Galing ang raw materials sa atin. Tignan mo ang South Korea and the rest of Asia. They are progressing and they have the steel industry to rely on. The backbone of industrialization. It's about time we have our own. We will welcome investors and we will fix our laws and come up with the code of economics. We will open our country for business, for investment. We will give uh, investors more than what the other countries are giving, better than what the other competing countries are giving them. The problem in the Philippines today is that we have laws that are convoluted and the red tape is really a disturbing problem. I would assure you that I will make our economic policies and laws simple, believable, and protect the investments that would come in. Alam mo sa siyudad ko, I have imposed this rule of uh, acting on whatever permits uh, clearances, a 72-hour limit. 
Pag hindi mo na kumpleto yan, or hindi mo ginawa within 72 hours, you are no longer allowed to release it to the person uh, or the persons concerned. You have to give it back to my table sa City Hall with an explanation why it took you more than 72 hours to act on the papers. At ako naman, ang policy ko is pag may difference yung isang opisina, especially corruption, mga fixes, I go into a complete change. Chief of office hanggang janitor. Yan ang policy ko sa dago. Pag nagkamali, and even police, hindi lang may police dyan, and there is a lucrative uh, drug uh, business inside the city. I will change the police and every policeman. Yung kasalanan ng isa, kasalanan ninyo ng lahat dyan. Lalo na if it involves people connected with security. You have mentioned that the Philippines has many islands, and since foreign business know exactly what they need, we can lease an island to them where they can build their factories and businesses according to their own needs and rules, like a business island patterned after Hong Kong. One way to do it really is to attract people. Now, there are islands available here in the Philippines. It might be small, it might be big. But if it suits well to the business, eh, parang ibigay mo na sa kanila. Without really giving up anything under Philippine law. And uh, para yung isang island nila, parang factory na yun nila. They can run their own show, discipline people there, and uh, they can configure the island to their needs. Now, instead of a factory, I give you an island. Okay, put your business there, obey the laws of the Republic of the Philippines, and you can tailor the configurations of whatever you want in that island. Only that you would ask or demand that you protect our environment. By doing this, we create jobs. Hindi na pupunta yung Pilipino sa labas, it creates jobs here in, within our borders and within our islands. And they can do business and the livelihood of the people as well. To say to you, two countries, Hong Kong, Singapore, hindi na sila lumalabas sa bayan nila magtrabaho. Business attracts its own people and their own boundaries. Dapat ganun ang mangyari sa atin. How will you lower food cost? The problem in the Philippines today is that we lack infrastructure. Kung mahirap ang daan and there's no roads at all and people have to buy goods from the outside of the province or city, the freight alone will kill you. At kung walang magandang daan, mas magastos. Kasi mas maraming gasolina ang gamitin. And one other also is yung mga checkpoints ng polis. Kasi kung magbigay ka sa mga checkpoints, ultimately, itong nalugi nila na pera o inibigay nila dyan sa kung ano-ano ang mga checkpoints dyan sa highway, ita charge doon yan sa consumer. Dapat mawala rin yan. Dapat ang daan maganda at mabilis. You know, in the law of supply and demand sa economics, ang habuling ng mga negosyante is how to transport their business from one place to the other fastest, kagaya ng isda. Then the cheapest, o kaya na may infrastructure ka. If there's a road there, you do not have to double your expense of gasolina. And the safest, safe yung pagdala mo sa goods from one province to another. Yan ang rule ng economics eh. You transport the goods because there is a law of supply and demand. Certain goods are needed in other place. Or eh, merong isa dito, ikaw yung nag-export sa, sa ibang bayan. You will go for the cheapest, the fastest, and the safest. Well, one factor really is the craving for profit. Bibilihin ng mga middlemen. Kaya yun nga galit ng mga komunista dyan, yung comprador. Because they double the price. And also because of the yeah, checkpoint, kung ano-anong bilihan nila, kung anong bigyan. And they will add it up to the consumer eventually. Yan ang nangyayari dyan. Everybody wants to act a living. Some borrow some of their own capital. But for the ordinary poor Filipino, he goes to buy money from the sharks. Loan sharks. At uh, yung tatawag na 5-6 dito sa Pilipinas, and you adapt to the price of the goods that you're selling, plus yung nawawala mo sa checkpoints, and eventually, 
it is the consumer that suffers. Iyon ang problema niya. There has to be a way where uh, the land bank, DBP, or other government financing institutions can lend money to the poor so that they can avoid the 5-6. So you must uh, put up uh, mga bagsakan, put terminals, and it, people can have a choice of uh, going to the supermarkets to buy at a higher price o sila ang pumunta doon sa mga bagsakan for a lower cost sa pagkain. Dapat ma Pahiram natin, may bigyan natin ng mga loans ang ating mga farmers at fishermen para naman na uh, may kita sila and they can have uh, a livelihood at the same time they can sell their products at a lower cost for everybody. If we can do away with the hindrances, the obstacles, and uh, we are able to create the infrastructure, uh, I aim to lower the food cost in your table by almost 25 to 50 percent within a year. This is the real trickle-down economics. What about education? To do this, you must promote value education or government. TV, radio, and mass media, all the resources should be able to concentrate on educating our children, building character, and we must teach uh, the values of uh, hard work, ethic, honesty, cleanliness, self-respect, and the molding of character, of self-reliance. Discipline that have started in Davao is now being enforced by the people themselves. I have proven that it can be done. We must be innovative. If there are still lack of classrooms, and we can rely on technology, for example, big screens, but in the meantime, we we'll teach our children the education that they need. Any parting message? Lastly, we must do our work with dignity. We must be able to realize that to progress materially and spiritually, we must be proud of ourselves and learn the dignity of labor and to respect everybody's jobs. Pride and love of country and dignity will be the spiritual force.